I'd like to give a demonstration of a little device that I put together and prototyped uh, using an Arduino. And what it is is a, um, a shutter tester, shutter speed tester for uh, old analog and large format cameras. So you can see the prototype here. I built this up on a um, initially on an Arduino, but I have it transferred here to an um, Admega AT328P chip for cost re reduction. So that is operating in a standalone fashion without a bootloader on the um, on the chip. So the basic function of this is to measure the shutter speed of these old lenses and shutters. Now for the purposes of the test I have um, I'm using my old Grayflex Graphic View 2 camera with the bellows fully compressed and I have this old Schneider lens that's probably 1970s vintage and it's mounted into a Copal number no. 1 shutter that's mounted on a 4x4 lens board on the front of the um, of the camera. Now you can see that this old mechanical shutter has speeds ranging from one second all the way up to one four hundredth of a second and uh, this is an f5.6 lens which indicates the maximum aperture that it's capable of supporting. It also has a bulb and a T function. The B keeps the shutter open as long as the shutter release on the side here is depressed. And the uh, T toggles the shutter open and closed for every operation of the shutter. This shutter is completely mechanical so for each operation it has to be cocked by pulling and releasing the, um, the uh, cocking lever there. So it's quite simple. It mounts on the front of this Grayflex view camera, 4x5 view camera, and I have removed the back of that uh, view camera to expose the interior of it. Now let me turn on this little flashlight. So you can see the back of the lens, and it's basically just a glorified box camera uh, with adjustable bellows that supports a, a film back and a... Um, and a lens mounting option. What I'm going to do here is using this old, um, using this magnifier as a support, which is on kind of a set of adjustable arms. I'm going to position this light so it's illuminating the um, the back of the shutter, and I'm going to leave the leave the rear and the front lens cells attached. So that's pretty good alignment here. And what I've done is I have a photo transistor and later I'm going to replace this with a photodiode but I have it mounted on a piece of wire that is uh, supporting it directly in front of the camera so that the light beam focused by the lens will illuminate the photodiode whenever the shutter is opened and stop illuminating it when it's closed. Now that signal will travel down these wires to the uh, prototype here and the Arduino is configured to detect the rising edge that is generated by the phototransistor when the shutter opens. It starts a precision timer that has a 16 microsecond tick and then when the shutter closes again it detects the falling edge and then displays the time in both uh, conventional um, fractional form and then there's a more accurate representation in uh, microseconds which can be uh, used to calculate a more precise value so for convenience I display it both ways uh, so that's basically it but doing this is not as easy as it sounds there's a couple of ways of configuring the trigger on the Arduino one is to one is to use a digital input which will give a result but it's completely incapable of giving a repeatable result because of the uh, because of the operation of the threshold. The best way to do it and the way I've chosen is to use the comparator function on the uh, on the chip. So what I do is I set a comparator reference voltage of about 250 millivolts using a pair of resistors which are over here and that sets the threshold voltage of the comparator and then when the light hits the photodiode it generates a positive pulse and that pulse will um, 
cross the threshold voltage of 250 millivolts and give a very precise timing on the trigger which begins, uh, which captures the value of a counter on the crossing. It then flips the sense of the sensor around to the negative going pulse and then when the light is uh, extinguished from the shutter, when the shutter closes, it, um, it will stop the time and then calculate and display the results. So it sounds simple, but there's lots of places where this can go wrong. So there's quite a bit of error checking. And uh, the, the uh, device will actually display or, and prompt with a beep when there's an error condition and prompt you to redo the test. But it's quite reliable and it's quite repeatable. So let's give it a try. So again, I've got the light illuminating the back of the lens and moving around to the front. If I open the lens, <clears throat> I can see that the, um, the um, photodiode or the phototransistor is, uh, is well illuminated. See, the lens needs a good cleaning, but um, it's pretty much right in the center of the, of the lens. So we'll close that and uh, we'll try our first setting. Now the range of the timing is from one second at the long end all the way to one three thousandth of a second, which is somewhat arbitrary. What happens is as you get shorter and shorter periods, the granularity of the timer becomes a significant factor. And by limiting the the uh, short measurement speed to one three thousandth of a second, that ensures there's no more than 5% error. But the error is actually much, much less if you're using uh, anything under a thousandth of a second. So that's, uh, that's quite acceptable. But the user should keep the measurement limitations of the Arduino in mind. So right now I'm going to set this to the one second mark uh, there. I'll cock the shutter, it already cocked. I have the aperture set wide open and will um, we'll trigger the shutter manually on the side here and uh, try that again. We did receive a timing error there so we'll try it again. And we had a confirmation beep and we got a good good measurement. So that measurement was 0.93 seconds and there's a reading in microseconds below that. And uh, if the inverse of the microsecond reading is taken, you'll come up with the, uh, the timing, the upper timing in seconds. So if anything over half a second is displayed in decimal notation, but anything beneath a half a second is displayed in fractional form. We'll see that in a moment. So just to prove this is repeatable, Let's, uh, let's take the measurement again. You see the microseconds varied a bit, but the basic timing is the same. Same thing, a little bit different, and so forth. So that's the one second. So you can see this shutter is a little bit slow, but it's pretty much right on at the one second speed. Let's change that to um, half second. Cock the shutter, try it. And we had uh, 0.51 seconds, so again, pretty much right on. Let's try that again. Got an error. And we have half second. Pretty much right on the mark. Another one right on the mark. And again, a little bit longer, but still, you know, quite accurate. So we'll move down to a fourth of a second, the next, um, next increment. Be sure we're right where we should be there. Yep, quarter second. Hmm. 
think I've bumped the sensor a little bit here. Let's try it again. So we're getting about a third of a second on the quarter second speed, so it's running a little long on this particular shutter. That's pretty consistent. Let's move it to uh, 15th, uh, sorry, eighth of a second. Try that a few times. Getting a seventh. It's a little bit off. Seventh. And notice, even though it's reading a seventh on all of these, the microsecond value is changing for more accurate calculation, but it uh, rounds to one seventh, which is just a convenient way of looking at the reading. Got an eighth there, so it went pretty much on that time. So some variation, you know, a little more variation here at an eighth of a second. Let's move that up to a fifteenth, uh, fifteenth of a second. Give that a try. Again, showing the operation, and we're actually reading a twelfth of a second. So um, we're running a bit long on that as well. So the shutter is showing some signs of age. You could do with a good, a good CLA or a good cleaning and lubrication. Uh, again, a twelfth. The ambient light I'm using for the video here is probably interfering a bit with the photo diode as well, but it still works. So again, fifteenth of a second, running a little bit, a uh, little bit long. Try thirtieth, uh, which is the next speed up. What I find with the old shutters is that about a thirtieth and a sixtieth of a second tends to be the the uh, the most accurate. Let's do a few of these. Crack the shutter. An error. One twenty-sixth of a second, so it's off. What's happening on the time here is typically one of the pulses is being missed, the closing pulse. There we go. Got it. One twenty-sixth. 25th. So again, off. Quite a bit off. We'll move to a 60th of a second. Give that a try. Considerably off. And this is kind of temperature dependent. Yesterday was operating pretty much right on, but not today. We're a bit, uh, quite a bit slow. Okay, we'll move, go on to uh, 125th of a second. And here's where things start to kind of fall down. We're only hitting 175th of a second. So the springs are pretty tired on this, uh, this old shutter. And uh, moving up to one two hundred and fiftieth of a second. Try that. Way, way off. Way, way off. But it's, you know, somewhat consistent. Consistently off. So at least it's repeatable, which is kind of the point of the exercise. If you know the actual speeds, you're able to compensate for the uh, rather significant exposure variation you would see with the uh, inaccurate shutter. I use these mostly for very long exposure tint types, so it's less of a problem. But if I were shooting film, it would be a very significant problem. So being able to test and characterize the Shutter timings is a fairly important thing using these these old shutters, which no one is making any longer. Okay, so pretty far off on one two fiftieth. We'll go up finally to the highest speed, which is uh, one four hundredth of a second on this shutter, and uh, see what happens there. One one hundred and fifty fourth of a second. So again, nowhere near the one four hundredth. 
time. Again, I bumped the uh, sensor slightly here. Or the batteries on my flashlight could be a little weak. It's important to have a good, strong, focused light source on the back. Let's try it. There we go. So again, it's you know relatively consistent, but nowhere near the one four hundredth of a marked speed on the lens. So there you have it. Um, again, it's very low parts count. Just uh, four resistors, two capacitors, the Admega chip, the crystal, the two uh, loading capacitors, and then the uh, low-cost Hitachi controller LCD display, a very common and inexpensive part. There is a, a beeper here, a piezo beeper, to give some audio feedback, and then a, a pot to control the contrast uh, manually on the, on the display. When I reset it, it does display a copyright uh, display and then shutter speed tester and since it's interrupt driven and then waits for the first measurement before that um, that screen clears. So that's about it. Thank you for watching and uh, hope, hopefully we'll get this on a circuit board in, in a proper package soon.